For the past nine years, on the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, there has been a secret hidden deep underground in the nether, something that by all means should not exist in vanilla Minecraft. A water source, the last of its kind, placed on the server illegally in 2012, its existence was only known by a select few. While other water sources have been discovered and destroyed over the years, there were plans to use this one specifically to completely change 2B2T's nether dimension. But recently, it has finally fallen. One of the players that had been protecting it for many years ended up making the coordinates public. Why would someone trying to keep the water safe end up leaking it? Well, once you hear the entire story, you might actually agree with their actions. Today, we'll be discussing the origin of the very last nether water source on 2B2T. We'll explain where it came from, how it was rediscovered after many years, the methods players used to protect it, and how it would eventually meet its tragic demise. Now before we dive in today, I'd like to thank Honey for sponsoring today's video. Online shopping is meant to be easy, so why is finding coupon codes that actually work so hard? With Honey, it doesn't have to be. Honey is the free online shopping tool that helps you find promo codes and applies them to your shopping cart automatically. When you're checking out on websites for things like food delivery or online shopping, a little box will drop down. Click apply coupons and it scans the internet for promo codes and boom! you just saved money. Online shopping is still at record high, so it's a great time to look for deals. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. If you don't want to waste money, make sure to get Honey. It doesn't cost anything, finds coupons with a click, and also works with PayPal and Venmo. It's legit. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com fitmc. That's joinhoney.com fitmc. Now then, Let's get started. So where did the last water source come from? Well, much like other ones we've covered in the past, the earliest record of players placing them was 2012. Anyone that had backdoor access to the server was able to give themselves water source blocks directly, bypassing the need for a bucket and preventing the water from evaporating. Some notable players to use this method were Pop Bob, Police Mike, and Harblax, among a few others. The creator of this specific source, though, is unknown. But whoever it was, was definitely trying to keep it a secret. They put it deep underground and completely covered it with netherrack. It was surrounded on all sides by lava, making it harder to see by using x-ray. This technique ended up being incredibly effective. Despite the water being located about 2,000 blocks away from nether spawn, it was concealed enough to survive for a very long time. For many years, as server events would unfold and groups would rise and fall, this puddle slept peacefully the entire time. But in 2016, during the height of one of the server's largest wars, a player that would eventually become the water source's protector joined for the first time. His name was Courier6. Wanting to uncover the server's history, he began exploring as much of the map as possible. In a short amount of time, he became quite the base hunter. He eventually became so good at it that he started finding places that were unknown to the general public. He eventually became friends with a fellow base hunter named Four Pilot, and together, they began a project to follow every single chunk trail in the nether. They circled spawn in a 100,000 block radius. It was incredibly time consuming but allowed them to find and document many places that had been lost to time. In some of my previous videos where we revealed things such as illegal end portals, Courier was usually the person that found them first. That's how good he was. In 2018, he would stumble upon his first ever water source in the nether. It was located on the roof, a remnant of the old days. Going directly onto the nether roof was no longer possible due to server plugins, so there was not much he could do but admire it. He kept the location a secret and wondered if there were other water sources as well. Since his ability to find the most secretive places on the entire server had earned him much respect in the community, 
players would often come to him with information and data that helped with his exploration. In 2019, a player named Lamp would privately share a world download with Courier. It was all of 2B2T's nether going 21,000 blocks in all directions. They used a program to analyze it and discovered that there were several water sources completely undisturbed in the region surrounding spawn. As you could guess, one of them was the single source deep underground, right next to nether spawn. Despite the area being a war zone, it had been hiding there the entire time. Courier and his associates decided they would keep the locations a secret for as long as possible since they could not be replaced if destroyed. They also wanted to use one of them to eventually flood nether spawn with a giant cube, as once the server updated, water mechanics would allow them to do this with just a single source. In a way, they had become the guardians of nether water on 2B2T, but their job was about to get a lot harder. A different group of players had discovered the nether water that was hiding on the roof. They would break the bedrock underneath the source, allowing the water to flow down into the area below. Using a large aqueduct system, they would go on to found the base Wasrigahole, a German phrase which translates to watery hell. Courier and crew soon discovered that this base had been built. They were upset that these builders had made it blatantly obvious there was water above, as that particular source would have been very useful for flooding nether spawn due to its elevation. Anyone stumbling upon the base would now be more likely to find the spring and grief it. So they came up with an ingenious plan. They themselves would grief the base, turning it into a massive lava cast. By using exploits, they would place lava and cobblestone on the nether roof to make it seem like the water was destroyed, but it was actually completely safe underneath the rubble. Then, in order to make peace with their victims, Courier would give them coordinates to a different area of the nether with multiple water sources that they could build at instead. So in a way, by griefing this base, they had successfully protected the water source from actual destruction while offering a solution to the players they had grieved. Not a bad outcome overall, but sadly, this master plan was in vain. For not long after, the server's admin, Housemaster, would use a plugin to clear all illegally placed blocks on the nether roof. This was done in an effort to replace broken bedrock as well as keep the server as vanilla as possible, but in the process, much history was destroyed. Their roof water was now gone and they had already given up one of their better water sources to the players they had grieved. So now, they turned their focus to that small puddle of water, still sleeping deep underground. This would become their backup for the nether flooding project. It wouldn't be as easy to transport as the roof water, but it could still be done through various means once the server updated. From 2020 through 2021, water sources in the nether slowly began to fall. The builders of Wasrigahole had completed their sequel base, Wasrigahole 2, at the coordinates Courier had provided them. It had a very similar feel to the first one, but with the water being less blatantly featured. However, it would eventually be found by a random explorer, and then destroyed. This time, the water sources did not survive, so they were no longer usable for any future projects. All remaining water was kept as secret as possible, but this wouldn't last forever. As world downloads of 2B2T's nether became more available, water sources had become easier for the general public to track down, if they were looking for them. The server's update to the modern versions, which could have saved the nether water sources, continued to get pushed back. Eventually, all that was left was this single underground source. Its existence had become sort of an open secret, but October of 2021 would mark the final month of its existence. Courier discovered that a few players were attempting to sell the coordinates to it for real-world money. Within the past few years, it's become a trend to try and sell items and coordinates for actual cash, and some players have had notable success in doing this. So this made Courier upset. The water that he and a select few had spent years protecting was now about to be used to potentially scam an innocent player. 
With the server still not ready to update yet, there was likely no chance it would survive long enough to be used to completely transform the Nether as he had originally planned. He wasn't going to let it end like this. He decided to do something that he never thought he would do. He leaked it. He posted the coordinates publicly and invited anyone to come see it. The first players to show up were surprisingly not griefers, but explorers. They turned the single source into a small oasis after nine years of sitting buried in Netherrack, only 2,000 blocks from the server's most dangerous location, the water finally had its time to shine, and was free for everyone to see. But eventually, a griefer would show up and use a bucket to take the water for himself. Almost a decade of history turned into an indistinguishable item in a matter of seconds. To make things tragically ironic, he would then attempt to sell the bucket for real-world money, but no one was interested. All he was left with was a useless pail of H2O, and thus the era of water in the nether was seemingly brought to its end. This was the last publicly known water source. While it's possible there could be others out there, as time goes on, it becomes increasingly unlikely. But I would love to be wrong about this. If there truly is one still out there, we can only hope it can survive long enough to meet 2B2T's latest update, where the new water mechanics would allow it to spread, with an entire dimension potentially being transformed. As the original guardian of the water, do you think Courier was justified in his actions? Let me know down in the comments, and you better be hitting that like and subscribe button. But that's it for today, so take it easy, FitFam, and stay alive out there.